So good morning, everyone. I'm Felipe. And today I'm presenting a work I have written with Itamay and Emerson. And our work's title is Predicting Legal Proceedings Status Approaches Based on Sequential Text Data. So basically, our main objective here was to develop a predictive, a predictive model to classify Brazilian legal proceedings in three possible classes of status. So a proceeding could be archived, active, or suspended. And this problem's resolution uh, can help public and private institutions to handle uh, uh, large portfolios of legal proceedings, providing gains in scale and efficiency in their operations. So let's talk about our data. So before we talk about the data sets themselves, uh, we should say that each proceeding in our case is made up of a chronological sequence of short texts. So we are basically dealing with a, a sequence of text classification. And we have two, base, uh, two data sets. The first one is a data set of around 3 million unlabeled texts that we use to train our unsupervised language models. And the second data set is a data set containing around uh, 6,500 labeled legal proceedings, uh, each uh, with an individual and variable number of texts. And th these data sets are sampled from the first and third biggest Brazilian state courts, uh, Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. So let's talk about uh, our classification strategies now. Um, Given that each proceeding is, has a variable number of texts, uh, we should set a threshold. So we chose to work with the last five texts. And in order to classify the sequence of texts, text, we combine uh, four feature structures with three classification architectures. Uh, by feature structures, uh, we mean language models. And they are uh, word to vec doc to vec TFIDF, and a Brazilian Portuguese birth based model. As classifiers, we used uh, multilayer perceptions, uh, LSTM neural nets, and an XGBoost classifier. And while LSTM can naturally exploit the temporary structure of the sequence of texts, and when using the multilayer perceptions and the XGBoost classifier, we had to concatenate the last five text representations to have, uh, to have a unique, uh, only a unique uh, vector of features for each uh, sequence of texts. And here we have our basic results, classification results. As you can see, uh, the best results uh, we got when using the combination of LSTM uh, with word to vec using a convolutional layer to extract feature features from each text in LSTM and BERT. So now that we have talked about uh, the classification itself, it's interesting to talk about uh, interpretability, how we use our models to make inter interpretable insights. And when using the LSTM plus, uh, combined with the word to vec representation, we are actually using a convolutional layer to extract features from each of the texts. So we have the LSTM, CNN, uh, dash, word to vec uh, architecture. And using this architecture is very convenient for us because we can, after training our model, we can interpret the convolutional filters, uh, comparing their final configuration with uh, tokens in our vocabulary. So we can see what kind of patterns the new neural network is searching in our texts. So basically, we, uh, we take a look uh, at the embeddings representations of tokens closest to representations of three out of uh, nine filters. Uh, for example, here we have filter six. So it, it says when uh, you can see that it says that when a uh, proceeding is going to be archived or is archived, Filter six, uh, seven is related to their archived and suspended classes, while the filter eight uh, doesn't seem to be related uh, with any of the classes at all. And we can confirm our intuitions looking at this plot here. So for example, that these are partial dependence plots. And looking here, for example, in filter eight, you can see we have basically flat plots. That means that filter eight doesn't have a relationship with 
any one of the three classes, while uh, filter six and seven have a very strong relation with uh, the output model for class one, two, and three. So this was our work. Uh, the full version can be found on Archive. And here are contacts. So thank you very much.